Well, Russia has launched another wave of missile attacks across Ukraine, killing at least seven people and injuring many more. Kiev says the strikes were mainly directed at power and heating facilities. That, with winter arriving, as much of the nation sees its first significant snowfall. President Volodymyr Zelensky says more than 10 million Ukrainians are currently without electricity. I'd like to get straight across to DW's correspondent, Jan Philip Schultz, joining me now from Kiev. Um, how are you and the residents of Kiev being impacted by these power outages? There are still regular power cuts all over the city and a major power provider just said that the grid is still running on less than half of the normal capacity. Um, this, uh, I'm in a privileged uh, situation, of course, here in the hotel. We have a generator, but a lot of uh, Ukrainians, most Ukrainians, of course, don't have this kind of luxury at, at home. And uh, a, a big problem is that electricity means much more than light. It can affect a lot of uh, vital services like uh, running water and especially now, of course, that the winter sets in, uh, heating is the biggest problem. A lot of Ukrainians rely on electricity uh, for, their, for heating uh, their homes, uh, either because of the, the, the central heating system is uh, too weak or it's non-existent. So there are really a lot of problems ahead for the city and the whole country. So it's not just difficult, but dangerous. And yet Russia is blaming this suffering on Ukraine itself because it won't come to the negotiating table. At this stage in the war, do you see any indication that people there in Ukraine would be interested in peace talks? I've asked the same question to many people here in Kiev, and the answer is always a clear no. Uh, a colleague of mine said he doesn't know a single person uh, in Ukraine uh, that uh, wants to negotiate with Russia at the moment. And I think uh, this is uh, truly the case here uh, in, the, in the country. Um, a government spokesperson just said that he thinks Russia is trying to use the same methods uh, as terrorists, uh, harming innocent people to have their demands met. And he also added that he's quite sure that uh, by destroying civilian infrastructure, not a single Ukrainian will come to the negotiating table. And so as we go on in these cold winter months, how is the Ukrainian government planning to address this crisis? Well, the government says that more than 1,000 specialists are working around the clock to repair the infrastructure. Uh, and of course, there are also restrictions on, on consumers. Um, but the big problem is that uh, with every attack, it gets more and more difficult to find uh, the equipment uh, to repair the infrastructure. And uh, the government, of course, says the best uh, method is prevention. And prevention, in this case, means more air defense systems uh, so that uh, the missiles that are targeted at uh, the infrastructure can be intercepted. That's our correspondent, Jan Philip Schultz, reporting from Kiev. Thank you so much for the update. Well, Mike Martin is War Studies Senior Visiting Fellow at King's College London. My colleague asked him how Ukraine's allies can help the millions who are now without power in Ukraine. It's very difficult, if not impossible, which is why, um, probably why the Russians are doing it. Um, what's happening is that the infrastructure of the power grid, so substations, transmitters, transmission lines, as well as some power generation are being hit and damaged. And obviously, th this infrastructure takes years to build in many cases. So what the Ukrainians are going to be able to do is, is repair small parts of it. And it, it is possible to provide pinprick power in places like hospitals by using generators. But the vast mass of the population uh, 10 million people, President Zelensky said, I'm afraid it's going to be a winter largely without power for many of them. Mike Martin speaking to us earlier. Now, even as they continue attacking civilian infrastructure, Russian troops have retreated from several Ukrainian territories and that they had occupied for much of the year. The DW's Matthias Bolenga went to the town of Vovchansk near Hafik, Kif rather, just four kilometers from the Russian border. The invading troops there are gone, but they have left devastation behind them. It used to take less than two hours to drive from Kharkiv to Vovchansk. Now it takes five. You have to take small local roads and long detours. All the major routes and bridges are destroyed. 
which is four kilometers from the border with Russia. The town was taken on the first day of the war. Locals tell us the Russians set up a torture chamber in this factory. They mostly took young men there. Serhii Konovalov says soldiers ordered him to go there after they caught him outside after curfew. I thought they would torture me as well. I came as I was told at 8 a.m., but they just made me dig trenches, carry stuff around, and stack sandbags. I had to be there at 8 and would work until 5. That's how they made me slave away. Everything looks broken and the Russians still shell from across the border. The people who are still here will soon face a tough winter. The electricity is often out and there's no gas for heating. Some humanitarian aid does come, but not often. It's so hard to get there. Given these conditions, not everybody is happy the Russians are gone. When they were here, we could still live more or less normally. There was work, and we were getting humanitarian aid every 10 days. They would also hand out money. Now we have nothing. Excuse me. <laughs> There's not much for sale at the market and not many people. Many left for Russia with the retreating soldiers. It's an area long considered pro-Russian. Now the Ukrainians are in charge again. Many are anxious and suspicious. You'll paint us as collaborators, says a woman. She won't be on camera. Mistrust is everywhere. Soldiers in charge of the town worry that locals are informing the Russians. We hear about those who are working with both sides. They used to tip off the Russians. Now they come to see us and say this or that person was a collaborator. Sir, he is only here to help his mother prepare for winter. He took his wife and young daughter out of town and will soon join them. But he's determined to return and hopes the town can get back to normal. We're on our soil. We didn't attack anybody. We don't want anything else. More shelling. This is what the days are like in Vovchansk.